Hey y'all, this is what I did over Memorial Weekend. On Friday, I started my day off with my favorite tea blend, Honey Apple Blossom Green Tea. I buy it from Tipple and Rose of Tea Parlor in New Jersey. It has a floral scent and is perfect if you have a sweet tooth like me. I work from home, y'all don't care about that. Things start getting fun though when my best friend Crystal came into town from Memphis. She says she brought snacks to eat before dinner and you know what those snacks were? Korean barbecue ribs. I love this girl. We swatched a bunch of makeup my mom brought home for us. Then when my brother came home from work, we went to Atlantic Station to eat Japanese barbecue agukaku. I usually just trust my brother to do the ordering for us and he never disappoints. The first thing to come out were the garlic noodles. Absolutely divine, highly recommend. Also, as you watch this vlog, notice how Crystal and I have the same facial expressions while we're eating. The second thing to come out was the beef bimbap, also delicious. The cheese butter corn was more butter than cheese, but still delicious. I am a hoe for corn, so that doesn't bother me. The first thing my brother grilled up was the harami skirt steak, delicious. And you know what? We got more of it because it was so good. Next was the pork belly, so fatty, so juicy, melts in your mouth like butter. Then we had the toro beef, which is thinly sliced beef belly, just like bacon. It was delicious, but I still prefer bacon. Lastly was the beef tongue, which was honestly my favorite out of all the meats. It has a more bloody iron taste similar to liver, which is one of my favorite organs to eat. After dinner, we came home to experiment with drinks. Mine was very strong and Crystal's was delicious and fruity. The next morning, I chilled a bit with cocoa before the chaos happens later that night. We toasted up a couple of croissants for breakfast, as well as some coconut whipped cream and strawberries. Then my brother came home from picking up my cousin and his girlfriend who both flew in from Miami for a housewarming party. It was only 11 a.m., but the best way to welcome a guest into the house is with some drinkies. Afterwards, we went to H Mart for some cream corn dogs. Honestly, bless me for living like 15 minutes away from all the best foods Georgia has to offer. Not every H Mart has cream corn dogs, but if yours does, go to it immediately. And because we're social alcoholics, we went straight to the soju and bought five bottles. Before we drove home, we stopped by Ding Tea to get some boba. I wanted to try something new, so I ordered the hazelnut milk tea. It fucking sucked. My dad helped me set up a dartboard in my game room, which I'm surprisingly decent at playing. Then it was time to make the food preparations for the housewarming. Crystal made rotel dip, which you have to eat with Tocito scoops. We all made pigs in a blanket. I made a charcuterie board with mozzarella pearls, salami river, goat cheese with honey and red pepper flakes, pineapple prosciutto, blueberry preserves, pistachios, and crackers. We had chips, cookies, meatballs, and a whole lot of alcohol. Crystal, Andrea, and I took the first shots. Then my mom and Jimmy joined in for the second round. I grab a pig in a blanket as a chaser, and then the party started. Jake comes in with a bottle of banana flavor whiskey and immediately starts pouring shots for us. At this point, we were only drinking soju, so now we're mixing our liquors. Then I decided to pull out the Aries elixir drink my friend made, so now I have vodka in my system too. Here I am having another whiskey shot, and my mom immediately starts cleaning so she can prepare for more shots, but this time it's tequila. After the tequila, I really needed something sweet, so we had some soju. Here's Coco wondering why we won't shut the hell up so she can sleep, and here we are taking more shots. At this point, my mom whispered to me, hey, set an alarm for every 15 minutes so we can take shots. So here we are, taking more shots. I honestly don't even remember recording Coco chasing these lights. So it was a very nice surprise the next morning. Look at how cute she is, she's so stupid. Here are my babies vibing to early 2000s hip hop and R&B and my mom pouring more shots for us. I don't even know how many bottles we went through but this was the result the next morning. I am honestly so surprised how none of us had a hangover. So surprised that I started to make more drinks. This time it's Jameson and ginger ale and some Sprite. Then I decided we we're going to the pool, so I just filled it all into a bottle. I ate some cookies for breakfast and it was time for the pool. It was a beautiful day, the sun was shining. I know exactly what you're looking at. I know, me too. And then my mom decided to come over with the bowl of watermelon because she is a goddess. Jimmy came home from Starbucks with frappuccinos for us and my mom bought banh mi for us. My favorite is banh mi dak bir because I love all the meats. And here's Coco sleeping. 
After lunch, Crystal and I started preparing high tea. We made some provolone turkey and avocado sandwiches, gourmet cheese, smoked salmon and arugula sandwiches, and cucumber and cream cheese sandwiches. I made some deviled eggs. The key to a great deviled egg is some diced onions. Crystal prepared crab cucumber bites and I prepared the tea. We also baked some brie and just look at that gooiness just spilling out. This definitely looks like nut though. So here's the final result. We have baked brie with pita chips, fruit with coconut whipped cream, fresh fruit tarts, crab cucumber bites, finger sandwiches, tea, more finger sandwiches, deviled eggs, and more fresh fruit tarts. Everybody took their pictures, I put on classical music, and then it was time to eat. Every so often, I like to prepare high tea for my close loved ones. It's just a way for me to show appreciation for the people I love, and it's a great way for us to spend some quality time together. Maybe like an hour after our high tea, Crystal and I went over to Hello Chicken to get Korean chicken and tteokbokki. Crystal doesn't really have a lot of authentic Asian food in Memphis, so we're just trying to pack as much Asian food in her as we can before she leaves. After our second dinner, we watched The Strange House, which is supposed to be a horror movie, was not. Still good, just wasn't scary. The next morning, my mom made pho for us because that's how Viet's do breakfast, having a whole full bowl of soup and noodles with lots of meats. A lot of people always ask me what's my favorite place for pho, and I always say my mom's house because restaurant pho just does not hit like my mom's. After breakfast, we chilled a little bit. Here's Coco humping Crystal's leg profusely, and here I am thirst trapping. Crystal and I lounged at the pool a little bit again before some kids came in and ruined the peace and quiet. So we went inside to get ready for the Van Gogh exhibit. But of course, before we go anywhere, we gotta stop by to get some food. We went to Jay's Mini Hot Pot. I ordered the seafood plate and Crystal ordered the beef and pork plate. It comes with a side of vegetables and I also ordered an extra plate of tofu. The way Hot Pot works, you come in, you make your sauce at the sauce bar and you cook your food in the boiling broth. We also ordered the lychee iced tea and it was so sweet and delicious. After dinner, we drove to Atlanta for the Van Gogh exhibit, got some more drinks. They wouldn't let us come in with drinks, so we had to chug it. Of course, there was a Karen in the background silently judging us, but I'm sorry, you're not fun, Karen. The exhibit was fun though. Absolutely gorgeous, a little bit magical. It felt like you're walking through Van Gogh's paintings. I especially loved how they fused Van Gogh's 2D paintings with 3D sculptures. It gave the art more visual appeal and a sense of wonder. I also didn't realize just how many paintings Van Gogh created until I actually went through a majority of them at the exhibit. It was definitely inspiring to me as an artist just to see the sheer volume of artworks he produced and made me want to reach those numbers as well with my own art. Here are some more sculptures inspired by Van Gogh's paintings, Corazon of Eisen, and Bedroom and Arles. Everything we saw up to this point was part one of the exhibit. The real showcase was part two, the immersive experience. You probably spent a good half hour here just sitting and soaking in the art. The visuals were stunning and there was classical music playing in the background that complemented the pieces. We were on the edge of the exhibit but saw an opening in the middle and thought we'd get a better view. Not only did we get a 360 view of the room, but that's also where it was the loudest. The speakers were vibrating the room so much it made me unintentionally go second base with the chair. I wasn't complaining though, it just made the exhibit a more fun experience for me. Anyways, back to the art. There was a point where we suddenly teleported to Hogwarts, so I felt right at home. When I eventually do large scale art exhibits, I want it to be as extra as this, if not more. Actually, it'd probably be more. I'd probably make it a 4D experience or something, so with this, you would feel like a light mist. I thought this was funny because it looked like Benedict Cumberbatch. Also, haven't you noticed that artists back in the day painted a lot of self-portraits while modern artists typically don't? Van Gogh painted 36, Picasso painted 30, Frida painted 55. I've been drawing since I was 7 and I've never drawn a portrait of myself. I just find that really interesting. I was talking to Crystal about that along with many other topics when this granny shushed us. I didn't want to get kicked out because I paid 40 bucks for this but it took everything in me not to cause a scene. Especially because she initially didn't sit that close to us, but went out of her way to be uncomfortably close and then had the audacity to tell us to be quiet when she was rubbing elbows with Crystal. Also, it's an art exhibit. People are meant to discuss the art. 
Don't be like this, Karen. Anyways, back to the exhibit. Part three and the final phase of the experience was a hands-on coloring workshop. We would choose one of the blank coloring pages featuring Van Gogh's art, give it our own spin, then scan it so it would display on the screen. Of course, I gotta be extra about it and I had to imitate Van Gogh's strokes. I thought I did pretty well in using broken crayons. This was probably the most intense I've ever colored in my entire life. I've literally spent hours stippling pieces before and my hands would be fine, but a five minute coloring session wore out my hands for the rest of the night. The next morning, I prepared brunch for Crystal and myself. I made salmon cakes eggs benedict with a homemade hollandaise sauce, topped with capers, a southern biscuit on the side, and a small salad. Pro tip, skip the dressing, just use the egg yolk. It's not a proper brunch without alcohol. We were both too scared to open a bottle of champagne, so we finished off our apple soju with watermelon juice. After work, we got ready for dinner. These boots were not made for girls with thick calves, but beauty is pain and they make my legs look hot. Yes, I bought these lavender glasses for Kogo specifically so she can match our lavender outfits. For dinner, we went to Igu, a revolving sushi and barbecue restaurant. It's around $35 per person for unlimited sushi and barbecue, so you get a lot of bang for your buck. And the food was delicious. Obviously not five-star restaurant delicious, but still great, and we didn't get food poisoning, so there we go. Crystal mainly ordered barbecue while I got more of the sushi and sides. The thing I love the most about this restaurant is the variety. There's something for everyone to eat. They also have Ramoon, my favorite fizzy drink. It exploded all over my hands, but that wasn't the first time I got something sticky all over me. They play BTS like every Korean barbecue place, so here's a visual of what happened in my downstairs mix-up after seeing Jimin. For dessert, we went to Art 3, a Korean cafe near my house, for bingsu and fish bread. We ordered the Oreo bingsu, which is Korean shaved ice, and the custard and red bean filled fish bread. Asian desserts will always be my favorite because it's not sickly sweet, and they're also aesthetic. The next morning, we went to eat dim sum at Canton House for Crystal's last day in Georgia. Shumai is always a must. We also got fried shrimp balls, fried taro dumplings, hagao, and egg tarts for dessert. Our last stop was Sweet Hut, just five minutes from Canton House, so Crystal could pick up pork floss buns for her grandma. They also have the best boba and fresh coconut mochi in town. They also have the cutest tip jar drawings. Here's Chibi Tendro and Chibi Mass Murderer Aaron Yeager. So that was my long memorial weekend with the people I love the most in the world. Back to drawing content. Okay, bye!